Hi everybody, Tim Hughes here. I'm the CEO and co-founder of DLA Ignite. Today I've got with me Daryl and we're going to be talking about Taoist principles, Taoist principles for technology development. This is something that Daryl is extremely passionate about and we're going to dig into this and talk about this in, in, a, in a lot of detail. Daryl, where can people find you? Uh, so probably the best place to uh, connect with me and see what I'm up to would be LinkedIn. Spend a lot of time there. Uh, it seems to be the social network that's emerging as a a, a, a hub of quality content, perhaps. I'm sure there's a lot of things to say that. <laughs> which seems to be stable in some shape or form as well, isn't it's, it's, it? Yeah, yeah, stable. So stability is the right. Yes, exactly. So that's a virtue that we uh, that we uh, value here. So, uh, yeah, and also canals.net, uh, my last name .net. I've a bunch of other non tau and tech related stuff um, is a good place to see where I'm doing things there too. So you, you, you've got two really big interests in life, haven't you? One is Taoism and the other is tech and development. And you've brought the two together. So talk us a little bit about your 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 tech background, because you've worked at some quite exciting companies, is that, haven't you? You worked at Canva and um, I, yeah. Amazon as yeah. well, which. That's right. Um, yeah, so I've been fortunate to work at some pretty big companies that have been done some really uh, interesting and exciting things. Uh, I started my career as a software developer uh, in the marketing technology space, so building websites, and I moved into data-driven experiences. Eventually, that led me to uh, Activision, where I worked on the Call of Duty franchise, building personalization systems for communication and, and player engagement. Uh, that work led me to Amazon, where... Uh, you know, Amazon is <clears throat> on the forefront of that kind of personalization and data-driven experience area. So I uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to work there and build some of those systems internally and uh, really enjoyed that experience. Um, left there, went to Canva, uh, another company that's talking to you know, tens, hundreds of millions of customers and got to enjoy that experience as well. And uh, one of the things that I noticed is that each one of those companies, they're very big, they're very successful, and they're all very different in their internal cultures and how they operate. And um, and so in, in my role as a solutions architect and, and technical product developer who thinks about systems and how to go from basically zero to, to deployment of, of these uh, things, uh, having to navigate those cultures is is interesting because you know cultures when they're effective they provide guardrails and they they uh, kind of I wouldn't say they necessarily need to mandate a good culture might not mandate but they guide you down a certain path. Uh, but when you go from such distinct cultures like say from Amazon to Canva, there's a bit of a you know cultural whiplash and you know, I, I can imagine yeah, it's, it's like two sides of a coin. It must, it must be. Yeah. Oh yeah, they, they really, I, you know, they couldn't have been more different. If, you know, if I'm being frank, uh, Amva, uh, Amazon, very document oriented process, um, you know, 20 years of establishing the, the most highly optimized internal structure. Uh, whereas Canva, very freewheeling, intuition driven, uh, the, you, uh, Melanie Perkins CEO, her charisma just dominates how that company operates. And uh, so, yeah, so there's definitely some cultural whiplash. Um, this was about, probably about two years ago when I made that that change, and uh, this is where I really found bringing my interest in Taoism that I had sort of fostered in my personal life into my professional life. Actually, was was a great benefit to me. Uh, it, it gave me uh, an opportunity to really see where there are common, foundational, universal principles that can apply in technology development in the same way that you know Taoism talks about. Um, you know the the interconnectedness of the universe and sort of how to operate in that. So, so for for people that are watching um, that don't know what Taoism is, can you can you give us a little bit of a sketch of of what how you see Taoism? Yeah, it's uh, ancient Chinese philosophy. Um, Lao Tzu, uh, the teacher, is uh, credited with writing the book called the Tao Te Ching, which serves as sort of the source book for that philosophy. It has, uh, you, like many of the philosophies that emerge in that area, whether it's Buddhism or Taoism or um, Confucianism or any of those others, there's uh, you know, an interesting uh, balance there between what you would consider to be a, a religious uh, a religion and, and its approach to ritual and faith, and then a philosophy, which is more of an academic uh, because, discourse. Because, 
because in the Western eyes, we tend to place, we see these things as religions, don't we? Whereas actually they're quite often, as you said, it's a philosophy of life. Uh, yeah, exactly. And, and there, there is a little bit of, um, flexibility, I think in the approach. And I, you know, I, as a, as a, uh, Westerner who values a kind of Aristotle kind of perspective on, on things and, and sort of the geometry and, and how things work, I tend to apply that lens to the Eastern stuff and see it as more philosophical in nature. Um, but it, it, it makes sense though, that, that if you are fully immersed in it and, and, uh, live it day to day and, um, y you can apply rituals and you can, you, you can live a religious life in that way. And I, I think that that's great for those folks that do that. Yeah. And, and so, um, so, so to talk us about how you have kind of fused these two, the, the philosophy and the, um, uh, the, 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 the development, because in a way we have a, I mean, the current development platform that, that most people talk about would be something like DevOps because you know, yeah. we've tended to, to, you know, when I first started, um, in the world in tech, it was all about case and then it was something else. And then, um, um, water flow or I can't remember, waterfall or something. And I, I'm not a developer yeah. and we've generally get carried on and we've, we've, um, um, we've innovated the, the processes. So, so talk us through how you, how you think about why you fuse these together. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, one of the core, uh, I guess, ideas that, that emerges out of Taoism is this idea, it's called Wu Wei, and it can be translated in various ways as either non-action or effortless action. And oftentimes we can relate to it in Western ideas as sort of a flow state where things happen naturally as they're supposed to and they're right. And the, that effortless approach um, is is an ideal and it's a it's something to strive for. And when you live your life in balance and in harmony, that's sort of a, a result of it. Uh, in DevOps, people, I've never met a DevOps engineer that didn't want to figure out how to do less and how to how to automate and how to how to basically, you know, if they're doing their job right, they're really not doing anything. And I think that there's a so there's a natural kind of relationship, I think, between those two ideas. Um, but, you know, in more in practical terms, there are ideas the, 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 that path to the flow state or the effortless action and that that harmony that is the ideal that path is is led and kind of paved with with ideas around interconnectedness adaptability balance and simplicity and when you at least when i found when i was you know uncertain about uh, say conflicting priorities and about uh, the way that the you know cultures and, and folks were trying to influence outcomes. If I could reduce things down to, you know, what are the connection points? How can I remain flexible? How, how can we balance all of the interests of everybody that's involved? And how can we reduce complexity and stay simple? <clears throat> that that led to a to the uh, that that produced successful outcomes and that that produced results. And uh, digging into it further. <clears throat> It, what I found was that if you take the ideas of interconnectedness, adaptability, balance, and simplicity, and initially you may think of it as a checklist where, you know, I'm confronted with a challenge, I need to make a decision, I need to prioritize certain operations or, or technical initiatives. If you use that checklist to, to evaluate where is the connections, how can I stay adaptable, where is the balance, how can I simplify? Um, over time, that starts to morph into almost an intuition about what yeah. harmony and looks like. And you can actually move much, much faster over over time, even though initially, you know, a checklist, it feels like you're creating friction and there's interference and I've got more stuff to think about. But it actually tunes your perspective in a way where you start to recognize things that are in harmony and systems that are working well together. You have, you know, um, reducing uh, notifications, so you you have less notification fatigue, um, and and really just focusing on those things that matter. Um, being able to ensure that you've got the perspective of a customer, and so that you simplify interfaces, even though you may have some pet features that you want to deploy. Think of, you know, there's always opportunities to simplify, and that that becomes an intuition. And it's that intuition that you can take into almost any circumstance. And regardless of whether uh, there are mandates for extreme documentation or lots of testing, 
you you'll still be able to recognize harmony and um, systems that are sustainable in terms of you know their long term uh, viability and those kinds of things. So, so 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 go through those four things again. So there's, so there's interconnectedness, adaptability, balance, and simplicity. So to walk yeah, us exactly. through that. So, so walk us through those, Daryl. Yeah. So interconnectedness, you know, from a technology perspective. Well, okay. So first, I'll start from just in a in a philosophical sense, hmm. the the Taoism and its recognition of interconnectedness is a recognition that all things are connected, in okay. and there is a um, the. Uh, the t the tower or the or the the way is is the animating force of this unified universe and so um understanding and appreciating that interconnectedness allows you to be more responsive and to uh to see your place in the world and and in, in, in clearer terms from a technology perspective all systems are integrated in some way or another. If you're building a cloud-based application, you're connecting to the internet, someone's touching it, they have systems. And, um, and appreciating the fact that there are these connections and integrations and APIs helps you stay mindful of your role in a broader ecosystem. And so it's, and now these four things, they all sort of work together, but if you recognize the interconnectedness, you'll begin to value the simplicity. Because you'll know that 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 your your connections to other systems are made more efficient and better when they're simpler and easier to understand. Mm. So that's the interconnectedness dimension okay. to it. And, and and I understand. You know, I, I think that sometimes you know we log onto the internet, um, and um, and everything um, flows very freely, but we yeah. don't necessarily think about actually the the fact that things are connected and there's some sort of technological handshake going on. Yeah, yeah, there and uh, and there's a uh, a sense that if you're going to play in that environment where everything is connected, you you have a there's a there's an ethical component to it too, and you have obligations to be a good player in this environment. And because of that that connectivity, you don't want to you know saturate bandwidth with you know too much. You want to be efficient with your with your data delivery, and you want to be a, a a good player that encourages you know, uh, more integrations and more, more adoption of whatever your system is. And, and I will just pause to take a minute to say that all of this, it does funnel into from a business perspective, successful initiatives, ones mm -hmm. that users appreciate that can make you money and that, that, you know, you still, everybody has a business to run and we're not just here to, um, yeah. necessarily so, sit and yeah. balance and, and meditate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, so with within interconnectedness, you you then you then talk about adaptability, don't you? Adaptability, right? And so, um, in uh, some of the key themes in Taoism that that you'll find throughout the Dao Te Ching, for example, are the ideas of harmony and also sustainability. And I mean sustainability in the sense of a um, kind of everlasting nature. Not necessarily. I'm not talking necessarily. Uh, ecological sustainability, but more just does your does do, do the do the things that you create and does your life and does your does do things um, sustain themselves over time? That's how we systems we we when if we're going to spend the time and the money to build things, we want them to last. And so, um, ap appreciating that things change. And and because you're you're connected to other things that are going to change, that interconnectedness. Um, you know, appreciating that leads into an understanding that in order for your systems to sustain themselves for the long term, they need to adapt. You'll need to be flexible. You'll need to, um, for example, uh, you know, again, they, they all work together in a little, in, in some ways, but um, appreciating the simplicity and the balance that's going to be required to have your system uh, flex with peaks in demand, new integrations, uh, growth, you know, and if, if your business is going to grow, you're going to need to adapt to new scenarios and new use cases. And so taking that mindset initially of the checklist, but eventually that becomes intuition as you look through your features and, and your development and your roadmap, and you want to ensure that you're accounting for potential needs in the future to adapt. So, um, very building in really rigid, uh, constraints and, and, and rigid oversight and, and protocols is not necessarily helpful. Uh, for your long-term sustainability and prospects. 
And and then after adaptability, you've got balance, haven't you? That sure balance. Uh, you know, this is this is the a everlasting dilemma in technology is how you how you prioritize on all fronts, right? How do you prioritize uh, near term investments in features versus long term platform investments for uh, for greater durability? How do you balance um, data privacy requirements with data access and availability for good user experiences? There are there are almost every decision that you make in when you're thinking about technology and how you build things involves some form of trade off and some need for a balance. <clears throat> and uh, and that's I think that's really key. And so this is another one where you are if you if you put the the Daoist lens on your technology initiatives you'll ask yourself and remind yourself to be mindful of where where am i may potentially out of balance and have i considered in every choice what what are the trade offs and and how am i mitigating any potential imbalance that might come from over investing in one area versus another and and then finally you have um simplicity as well don't you in terms of those four yeah and if i'm ultimately i yeah i i think that's that's both the you know the top and the bottom of of everything that 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 uh that makes this relationship between Taoism and technology work and it's uh everything is more manageable when it's simple I, you know some of this almost sounds it sounds obvious but when if you if you take into consideration how things are interconnected how you need to maintain balance where adaptability comes from you almost always end up with an idea that is simpler than maybe what you thought and that 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 tends to be uh the right the right choice and so um if you when you when you look at the work that you do I think it's you, you'll find it's just incredibly helpful to look and say, "Hey, is there, where are my opportunities to simplify this?" And um, that time spent in simplifying, clarifying, you know, reducing things down to their core value and their elemental uh, import uh, always produces good results. Uh, I, I wrote down a note um, when we we did the prep call, that I, and I wrote, "Move faster with less resistance." Yes, yes, that's right. Um, it must yeah, have been something that you said, Daryl. What's that? You must have said, "Move faster with less resistance." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's. I, I think that's the 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 core of or the, the core outcome of operating in this sort of Taoist function and um, in this method, achieving that Wu Wei state, and um, yeah, doing more with less, doing and moving faster is uh that's the way that's that's the way and, 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 how does, <laughs> and, and 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 how going back to the devops situation yeah um, and thinking about agile and stand-ups and sprints and stuff like that mm -hmm. how, how do you see that all interweaving together um so uh i think stand-ups are great opportunities to to have those discussions about alignment mm -hmm. and and values uh, or you know valuing these principles and so i don't I, you know i i would never suggest that um adopting this philosophy ne necessarily needs to result in a change in um in in methodologies or principles so you should folks running agile shops should continue to run agile shops if that works for them but in but weaving these ideas into that that process and so in traditional agile methodologies there's lots of checkpoints you've got um you know daily stand-ups where we can check on on simplicity and remind everybody in the on the team about the potential uh connected nature of the things that they're working on and and question each other's um appreciation for the adaptability and the work that they're doing when you talk about sprint retrospectives and you're evaluating the work that you delivered over the past few weeks, great opportunity to ask yourselves the questions about, or did we did we apply simplicity in the best way? Um, you know, when, when you're evaluating what worked and what didn't, the things that didn't work, how could they be improved by a greater appreciation for balance and and uh, um, adaptability? So I think, you know, that's the way I would like to see folks incorporate these ideas is. Bring them, bring it, weave them into what how what you do and how you work, and uh, and I think you'll find that you, you can uh, really shortcut a lot of the more laborious conversations to get right down to the root of what what can make things better quicker. Maria Humphreys says, um, "I love this conversation. Slowing down is more productive." 
Uh, Maria is probably down the road from you, uh, Daryl, because she, she's over that part of the the, the, the world. Uh, yeah, oh, cool. Yeah, I, I uh, slowing down to uh, as, as an exercise in in evaluation and simplification. I think that's that, that's all great. This is the the um, you know the 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 yin and the yang and those ideas of the way that things sort of work together, and they sound like oftentimes they they sound like contradictions to say that slowing down will let you move faster. Um, and, and uh, you know, uh, in, in uh, Buddhism, uh, koans are a really popular way to uh, meditate on the nature of the universe and its, and its potential um, contradictory um, influences. And so that idea of, uh, and this is one of them, I think those ideas of how, how you can slow down to move faster is a, is a great example of that. And and Maria says that she's um, watching watching on X uh, or Twitter in old money, um, <laughs> yeah. interconnected platforms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all we're all connected. Um, yeah, it's 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 amazing how um, it's hard to imagine any technology system that isn't connected to to every other technology system, and and that's one of the <clears throat> the interesting things that that just in in philosophizing a bit about how the Taoism how Taoism describes the universe and its interconnected nature it's almost as if in in technology with a big T in that world the way that 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 thing that that it exists in our universe is all connected in the same way and has the same dynamic and the same interplay Daryl thank you so much for coming on and um, talking about um, Taoism and technology developments it's fascinating subject and and you know we've had a number of people and we've got some comments from maria as well so thank you so much for that remind people where they can get hold of you uh so yeah linkedin is probably i'd love to connect with folks on linkedin see what other folks are doing that tends to be where i post updates about stuff that i'm doing uh i'm daryl knaus uh it's my linkedin handle that's probably the best way to reach me i am also on uh on x um Twitter. I don't still call it Twitter. Um, I, I know. I I still want. I I call it X because I kind of feel forced to. But you know. Yeah. Um, but it's still a tweet. You know, even though they say it's a post. Can't, you know. I tweet. I retweet. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what I do. Yeah. It's and, you know, I, it just doesn't have that ring to it, does it? No, no. Like I I don't X. I don't re X. I don't do that. I tweet. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Maybe over time. Maybe, you know, we'll see how how our language evolves on that. But yeah. Daryl, thank you so much for coming in. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. This was great. I, I really, uh, I love the conversation. All right, good. You're, you're welcome.